Hi there, and welcome to tonight's Google Hangout on traveling to Italy. Um, we're just getting started because it's a few minutes late because we've just been waiting for people, uh, people to join. Uh, but my name is Rowan Gilson. I'm the director of IPS, and I'm also your host for PhotoX Italy. Um, and I'm super, super excited about this trip. Italy is one of my favorite places in the world, and this itinerary is one that I've actually traveled before, and many of the sites are ones that I've actually been to before. And despite all of that, I'm absolutely thrilled to go back because these are, are really some of my favorite places in the whole world, and it just excites me, it thrills me to be able to share these places and these things with you. Um, and to be able to just expand your world with some of the things that um, you'll get to see and you'll get to experience, the history that you'll encounter, um, the culture that you'll get to, to immerse yourself in, um, and just the places that you'll get to see that you've read about, that you've heard about, that are, are legendary within the annals of, of Western civilization, uh, and that you get to experience and you get to explore and, and literally walk on those roads and feel those columns and, and see those things. Um, so this is something that's very near and dear to me and, and I love, and I'm excited to get to take you on a little journey to Italy tonight uh, that will hopefully lead to a bigger journey to Italy for you this summer. Um, and so we're going to start here uh, where we will start on um, our trip to Italy. So you'll leave the United States and fly into Rome. And in Rome, uh, you'll obviously land at the airport. Um, IPS staff will be waiting to pick you up at the airport. Uh, where we'll escort you to our lodgings, you'll drop off your stuff, and it's off to our first day of exploration. Uh, flights into Rome generally get in the morning, and so we will want to take advantage of that whole day to get to explore and see things. Uh, the first place we'll go to is one of my favorite sites in the whole world. It's called the Pantheon. The Pantheon was built over 2,000 years ago, um, and it still stands. It's one of the world's largest unreinforced concrete domes. People aren't really sure how it was built, but there it is, and there it stands. Um, and as you can see in this photo, it's just it's there kind of in the middle of the city. You would literally walk around a corner and boom, all of a sudden you're in this open square uh, with the Pantheon right there in front of you. Uh, this is the front of the Pantheon. Uh, you can see the enormous columns leading up to it, um, the names of Agrippa on it who actually restored the Pantheon. Um, and then you'll get to explore inside. Inside there's the open oculus uh, that's open up to the sky, and so rain or snow or whatever actually falls through into the interior of the Pantheon. Again, one of my favorite sites, it's now a Roman Catholic church, um, and so it's been very well preserved um, throughout history by the church, um, even though it was originally a pagan temple instead. Um, here you see the tomb of the artist Raphael. And I personally think Raphael is an amazing artist, uh, but this tomb actually represents a little bit more in terms of our story about Italy, because you'll encounter things like this literally everywhere, where you're wandering through a building or even just on the street, and all of a sudden there's a monument. Um, and it's something significant and something that you're aware of that you've heard of before, and that, that's exciting to you. Um, here, this is inside the Pantheon, we find the tomb of, of Raphael. And as you explore the rest of Italy, you'll find these other monuments and these other sacred, sacred places or mementos to important events or things like that kind of scattered around the country um, and that will come across. Um, you may or may not particularly care for Raphael, um, but again, you'll continue to encounter things like this throughout the whole trip, um, including paintings by Raphael and Michelangelo and um, da Vinci and, and others um, as we explore the different museums and even just the churches and, and the sites on the street. This is what the streets of, of Italy look like. This is called Piazza Navona, um, and it's just filled with vendors um, for locals and tourists alike. Um, obviously, the locals probably aren't into the street art so much, but the flowers and the food and the cafes and the street shops and things. Um, this is called the piazza. It's the open square that kind of um, exists within the city. Uh, it's almost like a park, but obviously not, uh, not grass and not filled with swings and things like that. But it's where the, the community comes together um, in these open spaces for events or just hanging out or uh, just going about daily life. It's one of the things that I love about Italy is just getting to experience that, that culture. Uh, we'll continue to explore. We're still on day one uh, by going to the area around the Spanish Steps. The Spanish at the top of the Spanish Steps. Um, the area around the Spanish Steps is the super ritzy shopping district of Rome. Uh, so you get to explore streets that are filled with Prada and Dolce and Gabbana and uh, various other brands of Europe and, um, and the rest of the world uh, that are probably way outside your price range, but if not, feel free to, to shop away. Um, and if you're like me, you'll just enjoy window shopping and, and seeing bags that cost uh, more than your entire trip to Italy did. Um, and it's, it's quite the experience. 
The next day, day number two, uh, we will begin with the Colosseum, probably the most famous site of all of Italy, and it's definitely one that's worth seeing. Um, it still stands tall, again, around 2,000 years old, um, and is uh, just a fantastic monument. You can see the scale of it here. One of the, the best experiences about the Colosseum is we'll, we'll take the subway to get there. And as you get off at the stop that's called Colosseum, and you're walking through these tunnels and, and kind of coming out, and then all of a sudden you'll step out onto the street um, through this doorway, and boom, right in front of you, rising up in front is the Colosseum, this place that you've heard about, this place that you've read about, you've, you've dreamed about, and all of a sudden it's right there in front of you. We'll get you into the Colosseum, um, get to explore all around it, to, um, to wander through its, uh, its halls, um, get amazing photos of, of the Colosseum, um, and one of the things that, that you remember or, you know, and it's debated throughout history is whether Christians were actually persecuted in the Colosseum or not. Um, and whether they were or not, the, the Colosseum does stand as a monument to that period of, of time where Rome was, was heavily persecuting Christianity. Um, and obviously that changed later and, and current day, the, the Roman Catholic Church is, is headquartered in the Vatican in Rome. Uh, but for a long time, Christians were persecuted very heavily in, in Rome. Um, and you'll find monuments to that in the Colosseum. Um, and for, for us, for many of us, the Colosseum will kind of stand as, as a memento to that. Um, we'll remember that period of time um, in our faith's history. Just across from the Colosseum is an area called the Roman Forum. Um, here's some of our, our participants from 2011 at the Forum. Um, on this trip, you'll get to hang out with other photographers, other people who have similar interests in, as you do. Obviously, we're all in Italy together because we like Italy. We like traveling. We like history. We like religious significance. And, oh, wait, we like cameras, too. We like, we like photographs. Um, and so our, our days will kind of um, move at a photographer's pace where we'll go to these different significant sites and then just give you hours to go and explore uh, the sites themselves and the areas around them kind of at your own pace with some of the friends that you'll meet or that you'll bring with you on the trip. We'll set up a meeting time from where we'll gather as a group and then we'll move on to the next site uh, where we'll continue to explore Rome and, and the rest of Italy on our tour. Uh, but it's a very laid back um, pace that brings us to the significant sites that we want to see, but again, gives you just ample time to, to make friends, to be a friend, to move um, at the pace you want to, to get the photos that you want, to see the historical sites that you want, um, and to really get to experience all that Italy has to offer. Uh, this again is the Roman Forum, where you can see um, down below is just ruin upon ruin upon ruin of what really is the center of Rome. And in many ways, is a center of, of Western civilization. Obviously, the Greeks came before the Romans, and we owe much of democracy to Greeks and Greek thought. But we owe a significant amount of, of our heritage to the Romans as well, and literally to this place right here. Um, that was the, the meeting place. It was the market. It was the center of thought. It was the place where the leading men of the city came to, to form ideas. And, and later, it became built up with these huge monuments and buildings and temples and, and ultimately palaces. And and, and civic buildings um, in what was the core of Rome and the Roman Empire. You'll get to walk on stones that were walked on by emperors, and you'll get to walk through the remnants of buildings that have stood for thousands of years that were filled with the Romans that you've heard about, with Nero and with Cicero um, and Julius Caesar himself um, and others, and you'll get to experience all of that here at the Roman Forum. This is the Temple of Saturn, which is one of the oldest buildings in the Roman Forum, um, and uh, just one wall is left of it here, as you can see. Um, but again, just one of the other cool sites. One of the things that I love about the forum is as you look, you literally get to see 2,000 years of history because there's buildings that are that, that old and then everything up to the present is, is seen within a single view. As you, you can see, history being built on top of history, on top of history, on top of history. Um, I don't have a picture of it in this presentation, but between the Roman Forum and the Colosseum lies the Arch of Constantine. And the Arch of Constantine marks that point in time when Rome became a Christian nation, when Constantine the Emperor officially adopted Christianity as the official religion of Rome, um, which transferred all of that persecution and all of that baggage into, nope, actually now you must become a Christian, um, which has significantly altered the course of, of Western civilization. Um, it was really one of the things that kind of formed or, or pushed the Catholic Church forward, um, and we still see remnants of that decision today. Um, and it's really cool to see that that monument that was literally built to celebrate the victory in which Constantine declared that Jesus Christ was his Lord and declared that Christianity was the official religion of the state of Rome.
Here's the Colosseum at night. We'll go back, give you the chance to pull out your tripod if you've got one, or borrow mine if you don't, um, and get some amazing night shots of the Colosseum as well. Get those deep blue skies, maybe some stars if you're lucky, um, and just the cool lit up, uh, lit up feel of the Colosseum. Uh, this is a, a tricky shot and one that maybe you're not comfortable with, uh, but that's one of the great things about traveling with IPS is that you're with other photographers and you're with people who can answer those questions for you. Uh, you will not find any class time on this trip. You didn't go to Rome, to Italy, to, to sit in a classroom um, and look at pictures. You actually went there to experience the city and experience the culture and to take pictures of your own. And so you have the freedom to go off and explore on your own or the freedom to, to stay with me and to ask any questions that you want, to, to have help with every single photo that you take if you want, um, and to make sure that you get the shots that you're interested in. So there will, will be some photo opportunities like this where we'll generally go as a group and, all right, it's nighttime now. Together we're going to go to the Colosseum and, and grab these photos or like the photo at the beginning of the presentation of, of Manarola at night. Um, but in general, you'll be on your own and have the chance to, to just explore. Uh, but again, the freedom to ask questions and to hover and to, to stay with me um, as much or as little as you like. Food is a huge part of Italy. This is me with my favorite pizza. Uh, pizza is everywhere and it's fantastic. It's different than American pizza. It's flatter, it's crispier, um, and the sauce is definitely different. So don't expect, you know, Little Caesars or, or Domino's, but it's a, it's a fantastic treat. Uh, but the way that we handle meals in Italy is each morning we'll typically have our breakfast at the, the hostel where we're staying, um, and that's provided for you. Uh, we will not have an official lunch meal. Um, we don't want to take the time out of the middle of our exploration that day to meet up together, to find a restaurant to eat, to disperse again. It would literally take two to three hours out of our day. And we want to just be able to focus on what we're seeing. And so you're on your own for lunch, whether that's actually sitting down at a restaurant or just grabbing a quick snack or, or not having anything at all. But you're on your own for that. But then dinners are an epic experience where we take great pride in finding amazing restaurants um, where we do a full full three-course meal. So we'll start off with, with starters and appetizers um, and uh, just enjoy sharing stories throughout the day. We'll merge into our main courses, which are fantastic in Italy. Obviously, there's a ton of pasta-based dishes. Uh, there'll be a ton of fresh seafood as well. And so if you're a seafood connoisseur, you'll enjoy that. Um, and then we'll move into desserts. Uh, and so dinners are, are a long and leisurely process in Italy um, for the Italians, and we just dive right into that. Um, and so the dinners will be a, just a fantastic dining experience um, that's probably, honestly, it's probably better than what you're used to in traveling. Uh, we just embrace the cuisine side of Italy and enjoy that. Uh, one thing I do want to mention is that uh, we do not allow alcohol on IPS trips. Uh, and it doesn't matter how old you are, uh, just for the sake of different ages and different, um, different consciences, we ask that no one consume alcohol and obviously no illegal drugs as well um, while you're participating in an IPS trip. Um, and just quickly, I just remember this here. Uh, if you have a question while we're going here, uh, feel free to use the question and answer dialog to send that through and I'll either answer it as we're going or at the end of the presentation because I'd love to be able to, to just answer the things that you're thinking about and that are on your mind. All right, back to food. We're here. You just see a, a cafe in uh, in one of the piazzas in Italy. Um, just a great place to sit, to people watch, to catch a break, to grab a cappuccino or a pizza or whatever else is on your mind um, in between sites and, and in between things. All right, this is Judson, who's been one of our team leaders in the past and who we're hoping is going to be able to, to join us for this year's Photo X Italy as well. Uh, and this is actually inside the dome of St. Peter's Basilica. Um, we're going to take you inside places like this and get you through, have access into some of the coolest places. And so day three will begin with us going to the Vatican. This is a different country inside of Rome. Uh, you don't get to stamp your passport, but you do get to say you're at a different country. Um, and instead of going into the sites kind of the normal way, we're going to go the back way and we're going to go up first. Uh, and so we'll literally go up into the top of the dome and have the chance to look down on the interior of St. Peter's Basilica before we actually go in from the floor. And so you'll have this awe-inspiring view from hundreds of feet up in the air looking down at this enormous and, and just incredibly decorated cathedral. From there, we'll move to the outside. Here we're on the roof of St. Peter's Basilica looking up at the dome that we were just inside um, and, and some of the other smaller domes. There's a cafe on the roof. There's a post office. So grab a postcard and, and send a postcard home um, from the top of St. Peter's Basilica. 
This will also give you some fantastic views over the city. You don't really find the high rises that we're used to in our cities um, in Rome. Uh, and so these ancient churches actually offer some of the best views of the city. Here you see um, off over the, over the city of Rome, um, this is the church here in the middle um, that was at the Piazza Navona that I showed you before, the piazza with the street art in it. And then behind it here is the Pantheon um, that you can see as well. And then obviously off into the distance um, there in Rome. Uh, and so this is a view from the top of St. Peter's Basilica. So we're gonna put you there, give you the chance to see this experience it, photograph it, uh, enjoy it, send a postcard home about it uh, before you move on to what's perhaps an even more amazing site, which is the interior of St. Peter's Basilica. I really don't have the words to describe this building and, and the impression that it will make on you uh, because there literally is nothing else that I've ever experienced. And I've been to 42 countries. I've spent literally years of time overseas traveling, exploring, seeing the sights of the world, and I've never encountered anything that's like St. Peter's Basilica. It is literally the most magnificent building ever built by human hands. And the thing that blows my mind even more was that it was built in the 1600s. And to this day, there is nothing that comes close to replicating the scale of it, the, the intricacies of it, the beauty of it, and, and ultimately its perfection. Even after 400 years of standing, the marble floor, the inlaid marble floor is still perfectly flat. There's no tilts or lifts or, or even chinks to trip on. It's perfect. Um, and it just blows my mind of the, the construction integrity that went into it and the artisanship. Um, much of the building was designed and architected by Michelangelo, um, although the building process was longer than one lifetime, and so there were other architects that were involved as well. Here you see a broader scope of the interior of St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, the church will literally hold 60,000 people. It's the largest church in all of the world. Um, and to give you a sense of the size here, you can see kind of down in the middle, uh, this bronze kind of gazebo-like structure. This structure is actually 180 feet tall, and yet it's diminutive in the size of this hall, which this arch, I believe, is over 300 feet, and the dome itself is over 400 feet high um, inside here. Uh, and so again, I just, I can't say enough about this building and just the, the magnificence of it and how much you'll enjoy getting to see the, the inside of St. Peter's Basilica. Uh, here's another shot of it where you can see that cupola a little bit better um, and up into the dome. From St. Peter's Basilica, we'll move on to the Vatican, uh, the Vatican Museums, where you'll get to see the Sistine Chapel, perhaps the most famous piece of art in the world, um, where you see the, the hand of God reaching out to the hand of, of Adam um, and meeting in the middle and, and really Michelangelo's finest work there. Um, I don't have any photos of the Sistine Chapel. You're not allowed to take them, though many do. Um, I actually did not. Uh, but you can easily look up a photo of the Sistine Chapel. Uh, but you'll have the chance to go in there. And, and that's something that's included uh, in your ticket to, um, or in your, uh, your participation in PhotoX Italy. Um, we generally provide for you entrance into the sites where we go all together. Um, so when we're moving kind of to a site um, that we're going to see as a group, IPS will provide the admission to that. Uh, when you're on your own time exploring, if you want to go into another museum or something like that, you're generally going to be on your own to provide entrance into sites like that. Uh, this is another of Michelangelo's most famous works. This is the Pieta, uh, which was carved when he was just 25 years old out of a solid block of marble. And one of the things that you'll wonder at as you look at this and other works of art that you'll see is just how Michelangelo in particular has taken a solid stone, a piece of marble, and made it look like fabric to where you can look at it and you can just feel the flowing fabric textures. You don't feel the cold of stone. Um, and it's really just, it's a fantastic thing to see. Again, you'll be traveling with other photographers. So you've got other people that are willing to move at your pace. It's okay if you want to stay for a minute and to grab a shot. You're not gonna be the one who's lagging behind always, uh, who's always in the back and always frustrating everyone else with, oh, just one more picture, or can you do this real quick, or can I get one more pose? We get it, we understand, we are all that person. Uh, and so we all are gonna move at the shutterbug shuffle throughout the trip. Um, culture is just different in Italy. Um, this is obviously one of their cars and it's super tiny and cars are one of the things that you just don't really realize at first, but then one day you'll be walking down the street and all of a sudden you'll see a Mini Cooper and you look at the Mini Cooper and you go, wow, that is huge. 
And then you kind of slap yourself on the side of the face and go, wait a minute, like that's the smallest car in America and that looks like a giant SUV over here in Rome. And it's kind of crazy. Um, but Italy is obviously a different country. And so there are definitely cultural differences that you'll get to, um, to experience, to explore, to enjoy. Um, some will probably be, be awesome and you'll be like, I've always dreamed about that. And others will be like, oh my goodness, I can't believe they do it that way. That's so frustrating. Uh, but that's one of the joys of international travel is getting to experience those foreign cultures and the things that make people different and unique as you travel around the world. This is one of my favorite shots from the last trip that we did to Italy. A group of us went out early in the morning to, to catch some morning light on one of the sites. Um, and as we were walking back to our hostel, I was looking for a shot like this where the light was coming down the street at just the right angle. Finally, I found it and I sent uh, Joel, one of our, our team members, up the street just to walk so I would have a model in it. But I just love the way the light's captured here and, uh, and the shadow that's falling back and just, um, just the whole feel of the image and uh, just one of my favorite shots from, from our past trips. All right, from Rome, we will head by train up north. Um, and on the way, we will stop very briefly in Pisa uh, for a chance to catch a cab or walk briskly up to the Leaning Tower of Pisa to grab a shot or two and then book it back to the train station to continue on our way up to the, the area known as Cinque Terre. Uh, trains will be our primary transportation throughout throughout Italy, um, and they're a great experience. I hope you've had the chance to travel by train before, and if not, you'll find you really enjoy it. It's much more luxurious and laid back than airline travel. You don't have the security and the hustle and bustle, um, and you have a lot more space, and it's a great time just to catch up on your journaling, to, uh, to browse through your photos, to do some sorting, to ask some questions, to take a nap or to grab a coffee or to enjoy some lunch on the train um, as you get to see the, the countryside of Italy kind of go rolling by you. Arriving in Cinque Terre will be another cultural experience all its own because we leave the bustle and hustle of Rome, which is a city of 13 million people, and arrive in villages of five to 600 people. Cinque means five and Terra means lands, and, and Cinque Terre is five cities along the coast of Italy that have been protected as a UNESCO worldwide heritage site. This means that they're protected from outside influences like tourists. And so we actually have to buy a special pass to get in and we're not allowed to bring cars in. And so really you'll find a very different way of life um, where there are no cars other than those owned by the local residents and where the aged fishermen still drag their boats down to the sea to go out every day for their, for their catch. Um, this is where you'll find some of the most fantastic seafood in Italy. Uh, and so if you are a seafood connoisseur, you'll have the chance to enjoy that here. This is also the region where pesto and focaccia bread were both invented. Uh, and so we definitely recommend that you take the time to sample those and enjoy that. Um, this is the, the town of Manarola, and this is the view from the hostel where we'll be staying um, and where you can see uh, the Mediterranean Sea off in the distance there. Again, Cinque Terre will be a, a different experience. It's a lot more laid back and it's kind of our pastoral, um, almost our vacation within a vacation, if you will, uh, where you just get to take the time. There's, there's not so many sights to see. It's one big experience and so there's not the rush to get from place to place but it's it's time to just enjoy being enjoy being by the sea enjoy being by in ancient vineyards that have stood on the sea for 600 years and uh, just enjoy the pastoral nature of it all uh, there's a beach in one of the towns and so it's a great chance to just hang out and catch some sun um, or to enjoy the the waters of the mediterranean i don't know what it is but they actually do feel different right i live on the pacific coast and I get in the Pacific Ocean semi-regularly, and the Mediterranean Sea just feels different. It's different salinity or different temperature or something. And so going for a swim in the Mediterranean is unlike any swim you've ever had before. Here in this photo too, you can see some of the villages off in the distance, right? We're in one of the towns here, and then you can see another one kind of back here, and then another one way off in the distance um, in the back over here. And in between them, you can see these kind of sculpted hillsides of these vineyards that have been carved out of the hills over hundreds of years by generations of farmers, um, where there's just miles upon miles upon miles of stone walls that have been built 
carefully by hand. Um, and there's some fantastic hiking trails that go between these towns. Um, and so it's a great chance for you, again, just to get out to enjoy the countryside, enjoy a, a very different countryside than, than the one that you live in, most likely, um, and to see some of that. Between each of the villages as well, you'll find um, some cemeteries on the top of the hills um, that kind of are a mixture of kind of a more ancient, uh, I guess, kind of pagan local beliefs combined with some Catholicism. Um, and just, uh, just very intricate, very beautiful designs and, and monuments to the ancestors of the people uh, that currently live here and those that have built the site for us. Um, this is one of the paths, again, between the villages. You'll just have the chance to, to explore and enjoy being and uh, to whip out that camera and grab some great shots, uh, but to just ex enjoy the fantastic scenery. From Cinquetera, we will travel by train over the, the top of Italy, kind of through some more mountainous regions uh, where you might catch some snow and then drop down into the city of Venice. So Venice, we're definitely back in Metropolia. It doesn't have the size of Rome, but it definitely has more congestion and it's more people kind of scrunched on top of each other. Venice is literally a city built on the sea. It's, it's built on 127 islands um, that are divided and crisscrossed by canals, and it's out in the middle of a bay. Um, and so Venice is, is a city on water. You'll find far more boats than you'll find any other mode of transportation. Again, just like Cinque Terre, there are no cars there. Um, you literally cannot drive around Venice, and so they actually have boat taxis, and they have um, boat buses instead of regular buses. And so you'll have a pass to, to get around. Um, and each of the cities will be providing you with a public transportation pass. And so this is what we'll use when we're traveling as a group to get from place to place. But you'll also be able to use it to do some exploring on your own um, as, you're, as you have your free time each day. Pictured here is the Grand Canal, uh, which is the obviously the big canal, the, the central one, um, and then the Rialto Bridge that crosses the canal. The Rialto Bridge is the oldest bridge crossing the Grand Canal, and as you can see on it, there's, there's literally shops on the bridge. Uh, real estate is of such prime value in Venice that they built stuff on everything, um, and the bridge is no exception. Here's the view from the bridge looking down on the Grand Canal and you can see the palaces that were built on either side as the leading citizens of Venice kind of competed to, to show that they were the best or they had the most money. Um, and they did that in the form of homes that doubled as a residence as well as a warehouse as most of the residents of Venice were merchants of some kind. Um, and this is where Venice showed off. So the Grand Canal has been, has been called the finest thoroughfare in the world. Uh, and we'll, we'll take a tour up and down it. Um, there's actually a special boat uh, that you can take if you want to that will go up and down it. Um, or you can take a, a gondola. Now there's two types of gondolas in, um, in Venice. One literally just goes back and forth across the canal and it's more of a ferry than a gondola. And those are super cheap. They're only like two or three euro. Then there's the tourist gondolas which will take you around anywhere. And they're kind of the more traditional and they're just a little bit more expensive. So plan on, I think, 60 to 80 to 100 euro if you want to take a, a gondola ride. And so maybe go in with a friend, uh, but definitely experience that's pretty cool to have. Another view of the canals and the, the gondolas here of Venice. Uh, one of the things you should be prepared for in Venice is that it doesn't smell very good. So we'll be going in the summer. And so just imagine a lot of water with a lot of people and the water doesn't really move, right? It's not a river, it just kind of sits there. And so it is kind of stinky and the water is kind of gross. Um, not overly so, you'll still enjoy it, but if you're expecting like pristine, clear mountain springs, you're gonna hate it. Uh, just be prepared for Venice to be expensive and Venice to be a little bit stinky. But it's also beautiful. Uh, you'll have a chance to go out exploring at night to just capture some of the lights that are over the city. Here again, this is the Grand Canal. But one of my favorite experiences in Venice involves food. In the center of Venice is a square called St. Mark's Square. Um, and at one end of the square that you can see behind us here is St. Mark's Basilica. Now St. Mark's Basilica is um, it's an amazing experience, but it's very different than the, the experience of St. Peter's Basilica. St. Peter's Basilica is the clean, pristine, enormous kind of, kind of experience. St. Mark's is much darker. Um, much more Eastern in its architecture, but nonetheless probably equally beautiful to St. Peter's. St. Mark's is also known as the Church of Gold. When you walk inside, you will find that the, the ceilings, the walls, everything is literally covered with gold inside. Venice was such a wealthy republic in its heyday that they literally covered the inside of their church with gold. Um, and it's called St. Mark's Basilica because they literally stole the bones of St. Mark, the guy who wrote 
the book of the Bible and brought them back to Venice as their, their relics for their new church. So this is the background for St. Mark's Square. Um, next to it is a giant bell tower, great openness. Um, if you like movies, uh, the Italian job began in St. Mark's Square. Um, and so it's a fantastic square. It's a great place. It's the center of the city. Napoleon called it the, the finest sitting room in Europe. Um, but what we'll get to experience there is the cafes of St. Mark's Square. Now, I remember the first time I went to Europe, I was on a really tight budget, like really, really tight. Um, and we came to, uh, to Venice, and Venice was horrible because it was so expensive, and we were on such a tight budget, and we could barely eat, and it was horrible. And we walked through St. Mark's Square, and we saw all of these fantastic tables, like sitting out, and these waiters in tuxedos, and these string quartets playing in the background, and we thought, that's where we want to sit. That's what we want to do. But when we looked at the prices, we realized that this was literally the most expensive cappuccino in the world. And there was no way that we could possibly do it. So when I was planning out our trip, Photo X Italy 2015, I thought, I want to sit in St. Mark's Square and I want to enjoy the most expensive cappuccino in the world in the finest sitting room of all of Europe and sit there and watch the people. Watch the tourists, watch the locals, look at the fantastic, amazing facade of St. Mark's Basilica and just enjoy being in the heart and soul of Venice. And so that's an experience that you get to have as well. That coffee is on us. We have that budgeted. We're paying for your coffee and your croissant that morning. And we'll get to sit there and enjoy the finest service, or at least snobby service, by the tuxedoed waiters and listen to the string quartets in the background and just enjoy being for a minute in those chairs that are reserved for only those who are willing to pay for the world's most expensive cappuccino. But don't worry, I've got it for you because it's totally worth it. This could be you. This could be you in Venice right there, the, the canals in the background, off exploring, wearing your Ray-Bans. You could be in Venice with us. Uh, just some more of our people from, uh, from the Italy trip last year, or last time we did this trip. Um, you'll just enjoy hanging out with people and making new friends, bringing friends with you, um, and just doing that in the incredible backdrop of Europe. Venice is known for a couple of things. One of them is these masks and the fashion that goes along with that. Another is for amazing glass works. Um, and those are both fantastic souvenirs to pick up in Venice. Um, the blown glass of Venice is just gorgeous and, and really is one of the cheaper things in Venice. It's not an outrageous souvenir by any means. Um, and something that you'll enjoy sh shopping for and enjoy picking up. From Venice, we are on to our final stop of Photo X Europe, which is the city of Florence. Florence is dominated by this building right here, which is called Il Duomo, um, the dome. Uh, this dome is famous um, for being one of the kind of the starting points, the, the bright flames of the Renaissance that kind of swept through Italy and then the rest of Europe. Um, no one knew how the dome was built when it was built, and, and people still wonder and dig through history today because it was so audacious in its scope. Nothing had ever been built on this scale or this style before. And the architect who did it guarded his secrets very, very closely. For years, for maybe hundreds of years afterwards, people have looked up at the dome and said, if they can build that, I can do this. And they've gone on to their own artistic pursuits. And, and really, it was one of the sparking points of the Renaissance. Florence is the capital of Tuscany as well. Um, and so that's a region of Italy that we hear about a lot and we enjoy Italian food from. Um, and so our trip would just be incomplete without a, a visit to, uh, to Florence. Some of the major sites of the city are all kind of centered around El Domo. Uh, we will take the time to, to climb up this tower right here next to El Domo so that you have the chance to see down right on the dome and to get above the city um, and capture the views around it. Behind it, you'll see uh, this red dome building is known as St. John's Baptistry. This building is incredibly ornate inside, uh, which is in contrast actually to El Domo. Um, El Domo is very Spartan in its interior. It was uh, built and designed at a, at a period of time where, where the decor was much different than, than the Baroque periods before. Uh, but anyway, St. John's Baptistry is much more ornate, like we've kind of come to expect from our trip through Italy. Um, but inside, it's actually most famous um, for two things. One is the bronze doors. Uh, and the bronze doors that are on the building right now are actually exact replicas of the originals. The originals are in a museum nearby that you can go see if you'd like. Uh, but the bronze doors are famous. And then inside is a depiction of, of much of the Bible. Uh, but the scene that's perhaps the most famous, um, and really for its gruesomeness and its um, uh, maybe its vivid imagination, is that of the Last Judgment. Um, and so for years, the, the citizens of Florence would come to St. John's Baptistry to be baptized into the Catholic faith, 
underneath these graphic and horrific depictions of um, of of the last judgment. So I guess kind of a, a an additional motivation to not back out at the last minute. Um, but one of the things that this kind of spurned on is is the artist Dante. Uh, so Dante was a, a poet or um, a literary figure, and, and really the greatest literary figure in Italian history, um, who wrote The Last Judgment, and he wrote uh, Paradise Lost, and, um, and other works. And he was, again, he was a citizen of Florence. He was in St. John's Baptistry. Um, and so you get to see that. You get to walk through that. You get to um, perhaps sit in a cafe where maybe Dante sat in, a, in an ancient cafe years before. And you can write in your journal about the things that you're experiencing and, and sensing, uh, maybe even as Dante did um, in, years by, in years gone by. Um, just the street scene in, in Florence. Um, you'll just enjoy the, the differences between the streets of, of your hometown and the streets of Italy um, and just capturing those things that stand out to you. Uh, here's that view from uh, the Campanile, the tower, the bell tower right next to Il Domo. So you can see we're actually looking down on the dome um, and then off into kind of the Tuscan hillsides behind. And then the, the final thing I'll note here about Florence is the leather markets of Florence are, are absolutely fantastic. You probably won't find, um, you know, the um, Dolce and Gabbana and Prada and, and some of the high-end brands that you're familiar with, but you will find the incredibly high-quality Italian leather that if you're a girl, you automatically love, and if you're a boy, you can kind of come to appreciate. Um, and so it's a great place to actually pick up cheap leather. And now good leather is never cheap, but it's cheaper, right? Think of this as like the outlet of Italian leather. Um, and it's literally just the street markets and a fantastic chance to, to pick up those final souvenirs uh, before you head home. From Florence, we'll actually head back to, um, back to where we started in Rome. Um, and then we'll spend one more night in Rome and then we will take off for back to our respective homes and our respective destinations. Um, one other thing I want to mention too about our lodgings. Um, in each of the places we'll be staying in hostels. Um, and hostels are, uh, are not super common here in the United States, but they are fairly common in Europe. And one of the reasons why they're super cool is the locations that they're in. So the locations that we're going to um, are often in the heart of cities. Um, it's very expensive to stay in, in the heart of Venice and in the heart of Rome and in downtown Florence and things. And so these locations are often reserved for four and five star hotels that are super expensive where we could probably never stay. But hostels are often nearby too, offering a lot more budget accommodations. And the way that they do that is they just offer dorm rooms where you just book a bed instead of a whole room or a whole suite of rooms. And so what we do um, on our trips is we actually book out whole dorm rooms so that we are able to control the entire room, which gives us security, right? Because we're traveling with cameras and with laptops and things like that. So we don't want to be staying with strangers, but also gives us just the comfort of staying with just our own group. And so on this trip, we'll be staying in hostels and you'll always be rooming with other people from IPS who are of the same gender as you. And that may be in a four bedroom, that may be six bed, that may be an eight bedroom, just depending on the hostel and, and the way the accommodations work out. But you'll always be in a room that's only with other IPS travelers um, and that's, um, yeah, and that's only with travelers of the same gender as you. Um, we also work very hard to book hostels that are super clean, have great reputations, um, and that offer us bathrooms um, on suite bathrooms. So there's a bathroom in every room. Um, and so again, we, we just work really hard to filter out those hostels to make sure that we're getting the best accommodations. And again, that just gives us access to some of the best areas of the city without paying the exorbitant rates that, um, that the super high-end hotels would charge. All right, uh, well, that is kind of the, the finale here for, um, for our trip to Italy. Um, as you can tell, I'm really excited about this trip. I have been thinking about it for a very long time. I've been planning it for a long time. Um, I've done it before. I had the experience to, to take you on it. Um, and I am absolutely thrilled with the idea of getting to take you with me to Italy. Um, so I would love to just take the chance to, to answer any questions that you might have from our live audience. You can submit those using the question and answer uh, feature here in Google Hangouts. Um, and if not, just encourage you to, to go and, and check out our page. So it's ipsphoto.co slash Italy, and that'll have all the information that you need to register. Um, we are offering a fantastic early registration discount. So if you register by January 31st, you'll get $500 off the trip, which is pretty good. Um, also, 
I lost my train of thought there. But anyway, the, there's other information on the page. You'll find a, a PDF um, with the full trip itinerary um, and many of the things that I talked about. Um, you'll also find a frequently asked questions that just kind of describes um, many of the other things that you might have questions about for the trip. All right, so I'm not seeing any other questions here. Um, but one of the things that I promised for our webinars here is an additional $50 discount code. Um, and so I will give that to you now. So if you go to the IPS page and you register again by January 31st, and when you register, use the code 20ITALY15. So 20ITALY15, and all the letters lowercase. That'll save you an extra 50 bucks on the trip and you'll just be 50 bucks richer. All right, so thank you so much for joining. Um, and if you're watching this after the fact later, thank you so much for participating. Hope you have a great night, and I hope to see you in Italy.